I agree. Skinsy white wine, baby. <laughs> Get on my level, Brenda. God. Thank yeah, you no, that's much. fair chat. Yeah, that is yeah. fair chat. So what you need to understand about rosé is typically it's a little bit drier and it has a little bit more berry characteristic to it. So Just fucking uh, leave the room. Just... Welcome back, guys. Another week, uh, more blind wine tastings. Big thank you as always to sometimes always the guys who sort us out because if Lockie had to pick them, then we'd be in trouble. Uh, no, so they sort us out the wines each week. If you want to get 10% off any of the wines that we drink this week on the show, head down to the Discord. The link's in the description. Head over there. We've got a little discount code to get 10% off. Um, and also, like and subscribe if you could. Genuinely, it would help us a lot, uh, specifically because some of us, me specifically, don't pay for anything around here. So I, uh, uh, the metrics on the YouTube going up is something that I would like, I want to keep my job, please. So yeah, uh, let's get into it. Six wines, let's go. Yeah, man, come on in, thanks so much. Uh, grab hey, a seat man. up at the end there. Oh, everyone, this is great. Uh, everybody's coming up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one, two. All right, are we, are, we, are we good to go? Are we yeah, doing this? Good. Wine numero uno. When you pour white wine, you look, expect it to look this color. Real middle of the road in terms of the color of it. It doesn't have that golden honey. It's not the color of my hair, like some of the wines that we do in here. All natural, by the way. Uh, Harry Grattan, shout out to you for making up a rumor in primary school that I dyed my hair. It crippled my uh, self-confidence for a long time. It smells like Riesling. It smells uh, slaty, sort of lime-licked. It actually feels new world. It doesn't have that sort of vegetal aroma that you would get with highly phenolically ripe uh, Riesling out of like Germany, Austria, and the like. So I'm really kind of vibing on Clare Valley, Eden Valley, if anything. Or, yeah, it's Gruner. If it's not Gruner, I will be fucking amazed. It's even got a bit of phenolic grip as well. It's got a like nice round structure. It's like a, it's like a tennis ball. It's like filled with custard. Yeah, the winemakers here have actually incorporated a little bit of residual sugar, which is a bit of an artistic flair as well. It's quite difficult to do. Um, so I'm definitely, I'm, I'm a little bit thrown, guys. Price-wise, I'm thinking 35 and six for sure. Tasty, tasty drop. One number two, red and thick red, black red, dark red, your ex-girlfriend's heart red. Yeah, it's 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 screaming Cabernet to me. It's got this like really awesome like eucalypty, minty thing with some like nice cassisi. It has an outrageous amount of tannin and structure to it, and I actually find it incredibly appealing. To be honest, the fact if it didn't have this tannin and structure, I'd be like maybe kind of want to miss it because of that sort of acidic edge. What do you reckon? I mean, I already had it, so I've already said all the right things about it. So whatever you're saying, I'm not paying those to. Tannin. Grippy tannin. So it's not Pinot. I think it could be a Shiraz, actually. Um, it does have that really sort of... It, like, as it rolls over your tongue, it's got this like big flavour, runs along. This wine style is coming back. Like, it's like... like when you try a wine like this, you want to drink more of it. You want to cellar it. Okay, cool. I'd, I'd roll with... I'd personally want to part with 20 bucks a bottle for this. But, but, uh, I, I would expect this to be up near that $38 category. Um, I'll grab a bottle out of interest and intrigue to see if that tannin actually allows it, I guess, to swallow up uh, some of those flavours and improve them over time. So we'll just see how that goes. Uh, all right, we're moving on to the uh, first rosé of the lineup. First rosé uh, in quite a, a, a long time. It's a brilliant, it's, it's, like, it's like eye of partridge, I think is the term for a really good rosé. Oh, fuck, what is that? Okay, I've smelt it and I've got no idea if it's rosé or white wine. Big ticks. I guess what I'm seeing so far with this lineup is it's really typical. It's really straight up and down. And if you're wanting like a really good savory, coppery style rosé that's not just I mean, I'm salivating like crazy. The acid's awesome on this. This is Provence Rosé. There's not a hell of a lot that I can say about that because it is one dimensional, straight up and down, very approachable in that respect, which is fine, which is fine. I only want to pay 20 bucks a bottle for it. I'll buy 12 because it is the cannon fodder wine. It's a skin contact Chardonnay, is what that is. That's a skin contact Chardonnay. Skinzy Shard sounds like a gang member. <laughs> Skinzy Shard's getting out tonight. It's been in there for 17 years. Go down the club. Overall, excellent little rosé. You would not be mad at any point if you bought this. Um, awesome. It's like we're continuing on the red train with wine number four. Yeah, cool. Remember that thing from last week where I talked about that doughy coininess? That's got that. So basically, leak the 50 cent coin, give it a sniff, catch COVID, and also understand what this thing smells like. To be honest, like not a pretty nondescript little red. It's, it's a very well made wine, there's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't have as much interest or excitement 
as a lot of the other ones have kind of tried. It's not showing a lot of varietal character, and if it is, it's my, like it's like a Malbec kind of thing. Sometimes when you have a glass of red wine and you take the first mouthful, it feels like it's sort of like smacking into your tongue, whereas this feels like it's really just like falling into it nicely. Like, you know when you see an old person get into a bean bag and they just like, boom, collapse into it? That's like what those red, lines, red wines are like. And this is like someone who does like yoga or acrobatics and they're just really gently letting themselves down into a really comfortable position on the bean bag. That's what it feels like when you drink this wine, what it does to your tongue. You can quote me on that. We have high acid, so we can cross Grenache off the list because it's a low acid variety. We have no tannin, so we can cross Dolcetto off the list. It may be Sangiovese, but the acid is really peaky. Like, really peaky. Gonna go Barbera on it, and I wanna drop 35 bucks a bottle, and I'm gonna go six, because I got a little bit more. Ruby, like raspberry, like sweet, but then also it's got the body to it that makes it like a serious red wine. This is the perfect dad's wine for me, in the sense that I could take it over to dad's house, he would have a good time, I would have a good time, then we talk about how like I'm not earning enough money. I don't think it's gonna cost that many bones because it's got that sweetness to it, which typically isn't something that you'll find in a really expensive red, so I'll go 30 bucks. And yeah, wine of the lineup so far for me. Uh, next red wine, we've got something a lot more serious, a lot more brooding. Um, you know, uh, wankery journalists will call it ethereal in nature. It smells like day and a half old roadkill. Like it still kind of smells like fresh meat, but you can tell it's starting to turn a little bit. Um, Cardamomy, yeah, spicy characters like thar anise and nutmeg and all that kind of thing. Well, it's definitely old world. It's got the acidity and structure and Wow, this city is amazing. Really cool, like racy red berries, great spicy interest. The tannin profile is awesome. I reckon this will develop really good. If you're looking for a really celebrable wine, I think this is a great, like great, great wine for that. Oh, it's hard to pinpoint the oak use as well because I would probably consider this to be Italian. I think it's Slovenian oak, blueberry fruit. But then it's like plum, like a new season Queen Garnet, just the first time you've had a plum this stone fruit season. It's a little bit tart because it's not quite in the real slot of when you need to be eating stone fruit, but then it's got the real sort of flesh of the fruit to back it up. Like, that's cool. That's uh, another 12. The acidity, the structure, the interest, that'll develop in time. And I reckon like in five to 10 years, this will be an amazing wine. Because that leatheriness will just kind of seep into the wine. Wine number six. That coming out of the darkness into the light, that almost looks a little bit brown. There's some tawny to this thing. This could be port, this could be nebbiola, this could be age, but man, there's some serious energy that's like reverberating from it. It's saying come hither. This wine is saying come hither. It's giving me the two fingers. Take, cut that out. I mean, straight off the bat, you kind of look at it and gonna go, probably gonna be nebbiolo. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that, that honestly is Nebbiolo of a uh, remarkable order, Oysters with Tannin. Great name for a band. For me, it's a no, but that's because of me, not because of it. I, I'm happy to pay a hundred bucks for 12 of these. I've dropped $1,200 on a case of this. Well, I'd hope they'd bump it down to a thousand bucks. Tannin, that would rip your fucking face off. Um, I'm gonna go like $38. I'm gonna go 12 because I'm a masochist and I like that kind of thing. There's a bitterness, there's a sourness there that tells me that I just don't think that quality would have been acceptable at a winery that would be releasing either a Cru, single vineyard Barolo, Barbaresco. That being said, at $38 to be able to get a taste of Piemonte's Nebbiolo of this order, which has probably been matured in a cellar for at least three years or four years. It's hard to find those wines. I think 38 bucks is a really good deal and I think 12 bottles is a bargain in my opinion. Um, but that's all from me. We'll see what the other guys think. Six more wines. This time we've got an audience because we're doing it on Friday nights and we're Woo! so popular. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, we just dragged random people from the bar to come in here. It was, yeah, it's yeah. fucking awesome. Um, and look, we'll probably edit this out if we don't know I'm going through with it. But why don't we get the Discord people to come and have wines with us on a Friday night from we, time to time? Absolutely. I think yeah. I think that'll be fucking dope. Sick. Yes, Lockie, keep absolutely. that in. Six wines. What did you guys think of the lineup? Pretty variable. Pretty variable. I, uh, I've i been buying a lot of wine tonight. It was, <laughs> like, it was like on, then off, then on, then off, then on, then off. Yeah, I was pretty much on the whole night to be honest. First one up off the bat, nice little white wine to start out with. I nice little Garuna. I instantly jumped. Oh fuck yeah! 
Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. I've, mm -hmm. I've decided that I'm going to start doing a thing where if I don't know what the wine is, I guess Grenache Blanc. So I've that's committed good, to this good. being Grenache that's Blanc good. pretty hard. I went, 40 half, bucks. I went half a dozen for 30. Yeah, I thought 35 for 6 was a reasonable thing to take home. Lock, what do we have? Bargain. Ooh. Goddamn. Cheap, 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 cheap green from the hills. Cheap, cheap green from the They can make Grenache Blanc for that price, I'm telling you. What the Rocky Gully, that? Franklin Estate, Riesling! Yes! Oh! Got it! Yeah, and hell yeah! In the context of Australian Riesling, this is the best value for money Riesling. What did you say? 22 bucks or something? 21. What the fuck's going on so, with the cheap So, wine? Rocky Gully, uh, so Franklin Estate is one of the greatest Riesling producers in Australia. They make, in my opinion, the greatest Australian Riesling there ever is, which is Isolation Ridge. Yeah. But they have this brand, which is called Rocky Gully which is like their entry level, cheaper kind of option. Uh, I think 2021 was pretty ripe in um, Franklin Estate and Franklin River. So it was like pretty like that stone fruity peppery thing. Yeah. But I love this wine so goddamn much and you should stock up your cellar with this because it's so cheap and That's so good. remarkable. Definitely hated this wine. Yeah, that yeah, looks like we empty. didn't enjoy it all. Uh, um, 45 bucks. Six bottles. Twenty and one. Twelve for seventy-five. Fuck, you're big. You into thought it. that was twelve dollars, and you wanted seventy-five bottles of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's what the yeah. No, I was All into right. it. What are the cost of it? Ah, this is Alpina. Alpina. Wow. And this is a blend. This is a GSM. Is that moment, you know, when we did that with Spiderbill, where I just cut the guts out of a wine and it was over like genuinely great people that make great wine? Uh, well, look, Spiderbill is one guy. Uh, Alkina is, 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 is a rich ass fucking he plays, man. he plays the drums and sings, doesn't he? Um, what moving right the along. fuck was this? Number uh, three. This delicious rose. Yeah, Provence rose. Dude, I thought it was a Skinsy White. Like I was, could be. I was sitting there be. being like, is this rosé or is this Skinsy White wine? That was my immediate thought when I looked at it and then I smelt it and I was like, nah, it's rosé. Ridiculous. All right, Lucky, <laughs> right. how much was it? Told ya! Oh! Fucking told ya! <laughs> <laughs> it's cannon uh, fodder. Cannon fodder, he reckons. Oh, that's Pinot Gris! It's Pinot Gris! Skinsy White wine, baby! <laughs> Get on my level, Brenda. God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the handing of the torch. Uh, I'm going to be running the vintage down next that, year. Uh, little hat there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'm sunglasses. I think, I think he deserves it. For that. Thank yeah, you no, very that's much. fair yeah. chat. Yeah, that is yeah. fair chat. So what you need to understand about rosé is typically it's a little bit drier and it has a little bit more berry characteristic to it. So Just fucking uh, leave the room. Just, I'm still impressed. That is the tastiest bit of green. <laughs> yeah, no, it, genu it genuinely, really it genuinely is. Uh, Dilworth and Elaine are some of the best winemakers in Australia recently. Um, and yeah, I tried this couple of weeks ago and it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I was told this upon tasting it by uh, John O'Connor who distributes this wine in South Australia said, huh. best Pinot Gris I've ever had. 100%. And, yeah, and, I, he was, and he's I'm correct. Inclined to agree. Uh, delicious, really, really good. Now we are into the money zone for me. Mm, these okay. next two, oh my goodness. I was about these wines. I was um, about all of these. I, I literally said, this is the sort of wine that I want to take to my dad's place so that we're both having a good time. Do you have a complex about your dad? You just bring him <laughs> up all the time. <laughs> dad wasn't around much when I was growing up. <laughs> For me, I thought that was 30 bucks and I wanted 12 bottles of it. I loved it. I was all about this one. This is the sort of shit that I'm trying to drink on the regular. How much was it, Locke? Yeah, right in the Right in the sweet spot between me and it. Yeah, awesome. God, we're good at jobs. <laughs> Cool. Oh, Syrah. Syrah. Oh, okay, cool. It looks yeah. like it was made by Bliss and Esso. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Dude, that's honestly, awesome. like, tell me that's not the album of Nod's hip hop album released yeah. in 2018. Valet du Venom. Margaret River Syrah. Syrah? In this okay. climate? That, on it, on, <laughs> honestly, that's probably that's one of the tastiest Syrahs that I've had in a long time. Reese Parker. Well done. Well done, Reese. Reese Parker. Good on you, Reese. I've never seen this label. I'm not sure about you guys. But never, never. that means I would imply that this is. Or Check, that would imply look, that, look, look at the side. That Reese Parker here is. Uh, and, and 675 bottles of 916 made. Oh, dude. This is a newbie. This guy is uh, to release a wine of that quality. That's a hot shot. That's one that's worth watching, and it's one that's worth jumping on sometimes, always, and actually picking up because for sure these young guys are worth supporting. When they put something out like that, get them quickly because it's not long until they're the next coat of barrels or the like. Also, Reese, um, I'm way better at wax dipping, so if you need someone to come and do your <laughs> bottling line, just let me know, bro. There's an artistic style, bro. Let him, give him, give him a round. Now, I have a really controversial opinion about this wine. I think it smells like day and a half old roadkill, but it's delicious. 
Why are you sniffing day and a half? Why are you eating? And how do you roadkill? how do you know what day the roadkill okay, was killed? Okay, okay, okay. Because I why is it delicious? <laughs> because how I work. Do you eat day and a half roadkill? It smells like it because I I work in the Adelaide Hills. I drive up there five days a week, so I can tell when there's fresh roadkill. I don't have air conditioning, so my windows are always down, and that is day and a half old roadkill. <laughs> Thank you very board. much. Fair enough. Uh, I think it smells absolutely fantastic, and I think it's an awesome, awesome wine. Yeah, okay. what did I say? I, dude, I bought 12 <laughs> bottles of it. It's my wine of the lineup. Like, this is really? my favorite wine. Yeah, really? sorry. Really? I, okay. I don't smell that many things, so I've got to adjust my <laughs> expectations. I'm like, it either smells like vapes or you it smells smell like smell the way that kill. you do, then I'm sure you couldn't smell many things. Mm. What's oh, no. that going to cost us luck? Oh! No, God! No. Friday no, nights no. is my wine tasting night, I'm telling you. What is that? I'm gonna say that is fucking Chianti. Looks like it. I'm gonna say that is fucking Chianti. Give me the fucking hat. There is the gallery. Can, loves I, can it. I grab that uh, Castel Vecchio? There you go, King. Uh, oh, it's, fr it's Friuli. It's Friuli. There we go. Friuli. Yeah. No uh, shit. So it's well north. It's proper north. Uh, it's well, from it'll the be north. one of the Valpolicella grapes. Then Corvina, Molinara, Rondinella. Uh, it's Tirana. Tirana was a grape variety. What? Yeah. Holy fuck. Now, speaking of All my right. father, as we always are, wine number six. This is fucking Daddy's wine. Of course you are. Lungo 38 bucks, 12 bottles, please. I paid about $100 for this. I thought it was absolutely exceptional. This is maybe one of the best ones we have on the show. It's absolutely insane. All right, for those reasons, I wanted one bottle of it, and it was $40. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still, I'm digging the $40 shout. I'm thinking 12 though, because I'm a massive fan of this. Definitely Italian nip. Was All it right. cost luck? Ah. Oh. No! Montalcino! What? Motherfucker! They were all just as surprised as each other. So, Rosado <laughs> Montalcino is 100% Sangiovese. Oh, is that Sangio? 100% Sangiovese. Man, Montalcino is that, just, 20, out, just is that 2013 outside. or 2018? I can't see it. That is a 2018? No, cool lineup. Like, uh, these two were real standouts for me. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And us thank you to our live studio audience. <laughs> Uh, we'll be back next week with more wine tastings and more ridiculous opinions, but until then, <laughs> see ya!